Welcome back to another episode of Two Dudes Watch Cartoons, the podcast where two dudes, that's us, watch cartoons. My name is Alex. And my name is Evan. And today we are doing something I don't think we have done before, which is we're going to dig into uh, two episodes of something with a very large catalog, uh, two episodes of SpongeBob SquarePants. But I want to introduce our guest, Danielle Weisberg, comedy writer who has worked on shows like The Simpsons and just recently uh, Crapopolis, an upcoming Dan Harmon series, which is coming out on Fox, I believe. Mm-hmm. Danielle, thank you so much for being here. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me. I'm great. And yes, it will be on Fox. We were emailing back and forth about what to cover. And one of the other ideas you had thrown out just as a hypothetical was Rugrats, a Hanukkah episode. We ultimately ended up on SpongeBob. I had limited access to cable growing up. So for the years that I did have it, maybe like fourth to sixth grade or something, I I think I leaned more Cartoon Network. But were you more of a Nickelodeon kid or... Or, uh, or or Cartoon Network, or what, what were sort of the, the cartoons you grew up on? We were definitely Nickelodeon cartoon kids, also big mm-hmm. Disney catalog kids, because I, um, I was a 90s child, so we had like all the VHSs of all of the, you know, classics, but our thing was really, because we were very busy children, <laughs> me and my sisters all danced, so we had a very packed schedule. But our thing was if you're really good and you get dressed really quickly in the morning, you can watch an episode of Rugrats before school. So that was like our incentive (laughs) to get out of bed (laughs) was to be able to watch a Rugrats in the morning. And also sometimes there was a Beetlejuice cartoon in like, I think like 95, 96. And that was the lineup. Beetlejuice and Rugrats. Yeah, I I feel like SpongeBob was probably one of, one of the only Nickelodeon shows that I would tune in for. I wasn't a big fan of things like um, like Cat Dog. I guess there were also Cat Cartoon Network shows I wasn't a huge fan of. I loved Cat um, Dog. Had Ed and Eddie being one of them. Yeah, Did you? <laughs> St- stuck in the middle with a little cat dog. Like, come on, that's... it's such a good theme song. Loved Same. Cat Dog. Yeah, it is. I mean, I was a big Nickelodeon cartoon <laughs> kid. Like, Ariel Monsters. Hey Arnold, Pepper hey, Ann was a big one. Doug. Oh, mm-hmm. you're digging deep. Patty yeah. mayonnaise. That and oh, <laughs> it was just a really good character design yeah. all the way around. And they did a really good job yeah. with food. We used to always joke about how we wanted the Doug pizza. Really good looking pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you had to go like a Mount Rushmore of your Nickelodeon recommendations for someone like me who maybe didn't have as much uh, experience viewing it. What would be your top picks? Episodes or, or series? Ooh, series maybe. And then if you have yeah, any standout series. episodes Evan that you want to dig sheltered into. sheltered is what he's not <laughs> just coming out and saying. He he didn't watch many of these cartoons when he was young. That explains yeah. why you want to do it all now. Um, my tops for that era probably be Rugrats, SpongeBob, Hey Arnold, I feel like those are the ones I've watched the most. Oh, Recess. Recess was a great one. Oh, okay. Recess. What a great yeah. show. That was, I think, a Disney movie. <laughs> but the other oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah. know what? I think you're right. It is. It's a great Mount Rushmore. We'll, we'll keep it. it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Alex, what was your lineup? Yeah. I mean, her, uh, Danielle's is pretty similar. I got to go with Sponge- SpongeBob and Rugrats. Those were just like always on. And if we're just going like all time Nickelodeon, not necessarily 90s, I have to throw Avatar The Last Airbender on there. And I'd mm-hmm. say my last one, Hey Arnold was a pretty good one. Do I want to get, yeah, you know what? I, I got to copy Danielle. I'm going to go with Hey Arnold and, or I'm just going to go with the controversial cat dog because I watched a ton of cat dog too. <laughs> Love cat dog. It's so yeah. funny. They were, yeah. it was, it's basically yeah. like, um, okay. the odd couple. But for kids, it is. Yeah, fairly it's odd cat- parents <laughs> is another one. Oh, 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 oh that's okay. Parents. No, I, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. switch. A. Arnold for fairly odd. Parents. Fairly okay. odd parents. I yeah. wa- I've. That's fair. Seen oh, fairly odd parents. Show. <laughs> another great theme song. Another great theme song. Nickelodeon mm-hmm. did have some good theme songs. So for something like Cat Dog, or 
maybe even SpongeBob SquarePants. How would you describe that style of comedy? That genre, like I don't know, like Ed, Ed, and Eddie for for me falls in a similar vein as as Cat Dog, and maybe I'm just lumping them together because I wasn't too fond of them. But like it's the absurdist or like I don't know. Yeah, the category that I always fall back on is absurdist, but also with. Mm -hmm. Things like Cat Dog, SpongeBob, I think falls in the category. Also, At Real Monsters is also a little bit of it. It's like absurdist, but also um, like dark psychedelic to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you read my mind, Evan, because I literally was watching SpongeBob today and I watched a little more than the two episodes we're going to cover. But I was like, this is peak comedy. What, what is this? How do how do you <laughs> bottle this up? And so, like, not to get, like, formulaic, but for me, comedy is always like, oh, I thought X, Y, and Z was going to happen, but A, B, and C did, and it was hilarious. And SpongeBob is so quick with it, it does not slow down at any point. It is just rapid firing, like, visual gags, the script gags, like, every bit of joke you can pack into an episode, SpongeBob is, is finding a way to do it. If you think about more like recent Cartoon Network or I guess I'm not super familiar with, with what's out now, but I, I think of like more recently in like the aughts would be like Adventure Time, Steven Universe, um, a show I haven't watched, but I've seen clips of is like Craig of the Creek on Cartoon Network. Are they like moving as a category, moving away from like that absurdist kind of thing and into more of these like emotional story based, plot based kind of things or I don't know. It was just a, some, some. Okay. I mean, it like, can, do they still make new shows, absurdist shows like SpongeBob? They do, but I can say from a from a writing okay. perspective, a lot of the shift from absurdist to what you're seeing as more like, oh, that could be um, a live action show, is writers trying to get into animation, like live action writers switching to animation so they can go back and forth more easily. Whereas a lot of the old stuff in the 90s was the artists as writers. So you'll see in the credits a lot of the times, like the story buys and the storyboard artists are the same. A lot of things now okay. are live action writers dipping into animation and the artists are not credited as writers because the writers are coming in and writing it like a full season of TV like they would do normally. And the artists are really just doing the animation and the drawing and the character design. That's not to say that they're also not writing. They're just not being like credited as writers. But a lot of mm -hmm. the shift that I noticed on the side of just like studying the credits of things is seeing that the mm -hmm. artists in the nineties were like, you know, they they're weird. They're so good and weird. And they would have these weird story <laughs> ideas that came from the art Whereas writers now are also good and weird, but their story ideas come from the writing. It just looks like SpongeBob, like you were saying, the writers are just having like the time of their life. Like yeah. any joke flies, like they go poop. And like they have a whole segment <laughs> in the episode we're covering where they just keep, keep repeating, oh, poop, videos. now I get it. Like, Yeah, they're just like yeah, 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 basically yeah. like goofing around and being like very, um, just like leading the jokes with the visual is a big difference than leading the jokes with the words mm. in animation. Follow-up question. Do you think the the cartoons you grew up on affect how you write comedy? Yes, big time. That's actually why I picked the SpongeBob episodes over Rugrats just for these purposes. Um, I love Rugrats so much. Mm -hmm. And I, I had Rugrats Hanukkah on the brain because we just watched it over Hanukkah um, and showed it to my niece and nephew for the first time. And it was like, it's the best. Um, it's also one of the only pieces of Hanukkah <laughs> media still that we have. <laughs> it's to a this day, yes. To this day. And I think that was from 94, 93 or 94. It was so early, it's but I've been watching it my whole life. And I'm like, we got to get something else yeah. as good as this is. But the reason that I wanted to talk about SpongeBob was because it so affected my comedy and how I write that it's just mm -hmm. a little bit more fun to dive into. Because SpongeBob, I think, aired when I was eight. That's when it came out. It's still on. Yeah. I'm 31 now. <laughs> so it's been like most of my conscious life has had SpongeBob in it. And the way I've been affected by visuals, but also by their, they do a lot of fun wordplay jokes, um, has seeped into my comedy just, I guess, by like 
osmosis. <laughs> I'll go back and watch things and be like, oh, like the their characters are so strongly defined. That's a big one. Is the character mm. you're like SpongeBob has they these are. traits, Patrick has these traits, Sandy has these like it's so clear. So that's a really easy thing to draw back to when you're doing your own writing is like how clear are these characters with their traits but also mm -hmm. their style of joke is very clear like squidward is always sarcastic spongebob is always kind of like hopeful you know patrick is always misunderstanding I like it's lucky. very yeah it's really yeah. clear and i love the jokes about like workplace humor when you're like in third grade watching spongebob you're not like oh yeah they're talking about a union but then when you go back and watch it as an adult you're like yeah whoa yeah it definitely had us all ready for the fact that um whoever your boss is is not gonna be like be your friend like your he's boss not is gonna not help you out in any way exactly yeah. mr krabs was a good fired. lesson as a kid yes great lesson also there's a great uh, okay, 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 training okay. video where i mean i'm sure we'll get we'll go back into it later where it's like there's a tip of like interfacing with your boss and SpongeBob goes into the office and is yeah. like, Mr. Crab, can I have a raise? And he goes, no. <laughs> and that's it. No. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> Perfect. What's so good is like you said, these characters are so well defined that they are able to make the Mr. Krabs is insanely cheap joke. 900 different ways. And it just never gets stale. <laughs> it's so never gets good. Old. Like, and it's so good. Never gets old. And, and one thing we haven't talked about is just like the quotability of SpongeBob. Like you were saying, like these episodes I watched when I was a child, I still mm -hmm. find ways to like incorporate quotes into like everyday life sometimes. Yeah. And um, just the meme ability. Something we, me and Evan talked about recently is like the cultural impact of something can sometimes be gauged in like how memeable it is. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> SpongeBob is one that has a million memes out there. Yeah, it's very memeable. It's also like really great screenshots. And that is, I think, a large part to uh, also the background artists. I've said this before, but I also haven't been on a lot of podcasts. So it's not like out there. I love background animators. They do <laughs> much good work on SpongeBob specifically. It's one of those jobs that kind of gets overlooked. But when you're looking at like the a still frame of something it's like so noticeable they do such good color work or did it's mm -hmm. the ones that we're talking about were in the 90s so it's very past tense but the ones that we're talking about i think seasons like one mm -hmm. through four are my favorites and there's so many funny yeah. songs like an example of meme ability and also quotability is the striped sweater song. I knew that's where you were going. I sing that yeah, every time I put on a striped sweater that I have. <laughs> all the time. It's all it's like the so, time. It's and so that's good. Also on Tom Kenny because he does such a good job with SpongeBob. But like that and like the F-U-N song. There's so many good songs mm -hmm. that it's almost Beautiful. a musical comedy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it can be. When he uh, sings the song about ripping his pants, that's another classic one. Yeah. No one oh wants to God. be in love with the fool who went and ripped his pants. Because, yeah. It's great. The beat, so, it's um, like a full like, Elvis song. Like, it's so good. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's full on. And... um what uh something you glossed over which i really want to highlight is mr tom kenny himself i think so much of spongebob's success is is just like from his pure unadulterated like joy that comes through in his voice the happy-go-lucky it's really great and so i'm sure there's like a long list of things we could do that tom kenny's been in but when mm -hmm. i think of um like voice actors who like it would surprise you if you look at their catalog tom kenny's actually the first one i think of he's been in so yeah. many iconic different properties ice king <laughs> in uh, adventure time he was the narrator and mayor in powerpuff girls dog in the aforementioned cat dog and here's a fun bit of trivia he is married to the voice actor who plays karen who his name, uh, Karen. Yeah, the, Karen the computer. Like the, robot. the robot. Plankton's Plankton mm -hmm. robot. Plankton's AI, wife. Yeah. Oh my god. What if they met in the booth? You know, like yeah. workplace <laughs> romance, but it's like SpongeBob and Karen. Adorable. Yeah, two random ones you wouldn't expect. But Tom Kenny, 
is a legend. So I, I just wanted to give him his uh, his due credit here. I got his autograph and I was like nine. <laughs> it was really significant. Oh no way! That would make my life as a child. It was amazing. I have it framed somewhere. I have um, I'm forgetting his name right now, and we can look it up. But the voice actor for Patrick, and then Tom Kenny mm. did some event that was like at a silent auction or something related to my mom's school, and I got his autograph, and I was like. It was the best. I have it still. <laughs> yeah. uh, Patrick's, uh, the the voice actor who plays Patrick is William Fagerback. Fagerbacky mm -hmm. played uh, live action Marshall's father in How I Met Your Mother. When I watched that live, I was like, Patrick? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I did the same thing. I'm rewatching Heroes right now, and he makes like a two episode appearance as like an FBI guy or like a, and I was like, why? How do I know this voice? I was like, oh, it's Patrick. It's, it's literally Patrick, Patrick Star. Mm. Um, yeah. He's another one, he's though. The voice amazing. acting is just so great because you get <laughs> his tone in every single thing. He goes, it's not my wallet. <laughs> like, it's yeah. it's so good. No, that's another great uh, one. Here's a question since you work in animation. Do you mm -hmm. have, I, I mean, we watch a lot of cartoons, so we <laughs> have this curse of we can't watch something without, like, trying to discern, like, where we've heard that voice before. Is that like yeah. amplified tenfold working in animation? Like, or can you just sort of sit there and enjoy it? Great question. It's hard because I didn't start in animation. I started in live action and I still like go back and forth. I'm just mm -hmm. right now I've been working in animation. Um, that being mm -hmm. said, I am very familiar in, with the comedy community. Um, not saying like I'm one of the known people. I just know a lot of the people. So a lot of times I'll be watching something and be like, oh, I saw them okay. easy or like, oh, okay, they were in this. And I know that the voice is <laughs> correct. And then I yeah. check I'm me and I'm right. Um, <laughs> so it is hard to just watch something. <laughs> I mean, someone with like uh -huh. a notable yeah. voice or something like, like a Kristen Shawl, I'm going to be like, that's Kristen Shawl. It's hard to not be like, oh, I know who that is. But it is different now because after working on Simpsons, Crapopolis, the point we were at in production, like we weren't like going to records or anything, but Simpsons, because I was there for so long, mm -hmm. we did a lot of overlapping production points. So like we would be hearing records while we were working on the next season. So I did get to see a lot of animatics with the record voices and also hear a lot of records. Um, and there are so like the Simpsons voice actors are in so many things. It is wild my favorite example mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. dan castellana is amazing but another favorite example is tress mcneil if you look at her imdb she is every woman voice not in Sim just simpsons <laughs> i mean every, every cartoon one she is every woman's voice uh -huh. in every cartoon and she's so good and they're all different <laughs> i tried to sneak a quick one-liner into my simpsons episode shouting her out and it got cut <laughs> so i will do it here i love that i uh i love the insider info honestly you, you give us some some good insight as uh as we are normally just only audience so it's it's fun uh getting some behind the scenes uh you know we've danced around the bush a little well, let's get into these these spongebob episodes a bit because i'm not gonna lie you picked two fantastic ones. Like, I, I don't know there is bad picks, but you picked some really good ones. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. which one do we want to start with first? I guess um, chronologically. Uh, chronologically would be Sleepy Time. Or, yes, Sleepy Time and, and yeah, Suds. Sleepy time I watched them both. You guys first. Would... I didn't watch Suds because mm -hmm. I it's so good, but I wanted to have Sleepy Time fresh. And then... Um, I did end up watching more after that, though, that. and I was like, oh, I could have watched Suds. But <laughs> Sleepy Time is, I picked, <laughs> I picked because the favorite sequence of mine is that is Gary's dream. And I think my second favorite so, is great start. Edward's dream. The reason I picked those is because I love um, Gary's dream so much. Yeah. Well, I'll set the scene here for us. What we have is SpongeBob uh, goes to bed, classic fashion, and he starts dreaming. And something in, oh, his dream's, his dream's great, too. He gets his driver's license, 
and he's speeding in a boat. Because it's so ser serialized, you can just jump in any episode, but there are so many running gags. Like the fact that he has failed boating school like 37 times or whatever. So he's got his yeah. he and he hits a rock and he flies off and Mrs. Puff delivers the great line. He's like, look, Mrs. Puff, I got my license. And she goes, not even in your dreams. But this is the catalyst. And then that she rips it into little pieces Spongebob of paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. They just, they never really care what something is made out of on SpongeBob. So like if they're yeah. ripping a license, it's just little pieces of paper. If it's like they're ripping up like a plank of wood, it'll just like poof. And I think part of that is like the joke that it's yeah. underwater, but also I think they're just like, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> physics be damned. It's, yeah. There's it's no it's physics great. in SpongeBob. And what? the physics there are do not make sense. I love, I love that. <laughs> no. And they yeah. joke about it. I love it because they'll joke about it too. One thing about the the running gag of SpongeBob not having his driver's license is when Steven Hillberg was pitching uh, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon wanted SpongeBob to be a kid who goes to school, and Steven Hillenberg obviously didn't want that. Preferred to have SpongeBob be like a working adult, and so his compromise was that he was just going to boating school, and that's why Mrs. Puff that's exists so as a funny. character, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, I did not know that. I feel like a lot of execs want it to be the same audience as what they're watching. And like, really, a lot of the audience does not care about that. Like when I was a kid, I was never like, I wish SpongeBob was my age. Like I, it never even crossed my mind. He was just a funny character. Yeah, uh -huh. he's a fry cook. It's yeah. almost a workplace drama. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a workplace <laughs> dramedy. <laughs> yeah, dramedy. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, that launches Dream SpongeBob out of his little thought cartoon dream bubble. Um, one thing that was really nice, we just talk about like small animation jokes is when he like goes to bed, he like takes off his sho socks and shoes as one entity, but then the socks just gently fall into the shoes and he yeah. goes to bed fully clothed, uh, tie, uh, you know, buttoned up shirt and everything. Like, I just love SpongeBob. <laughs> everything about it is so funny. Right. So like just SpongeBob takes his shoes off. The shot is just his shoes with his socks standing straight up. And then the socks go like into the shoes and Gary like looks into the yeah. socks and yeah. he's like, <laughs> And SpongeBob has that line of like, um, I don't want to quote it wrong, but he says like, Curiosity salted the snail. <laughs> no, he says like, watch your wandering eye, little mollusk. And then he goes to sleep. And then Gary has that oh, same yeah, line for what he is scientifically, SpongeBob, as a sponge when he's in his dream. And I'm just like, oh. Gary's like, he's always listening. And I love that. Um, but yeah, he pops out of his dream mm. bubble. And then he's like, ah, I can go into other people's dreams. This is where he gets into Gary's dream, which we can we can now jump into. But uh, one thing I was going to say is I love that they um, like in SpongeBob, things just happen. We don't uh, it doesn't matter that he's now a dream <laughs> as like it, there was no explanation, no reason for it. It's just happening. And I love that. That's like classic cartoons. Gary's this like stoic snail that never says anything. He just meows because he's effectively a cat. And you go into his dream and you're like, of course, mm -hmm. Gary's like a literary genius who has like a basically a Rolodex <laughs> library in his mind. <laughs> like, it's so good. And did you see there's yeah. a they pan over it? And I was all I wondered if it was a mistake or if it was a some kind of joke. But um, they pan over a book that says um, of snails and men. But the snails is possessive. <laughs> it's like I'm like, I don't, I like, I paused it and I was like, uh, snails, what? Like, it, it's not plural, snails and men. It's snail apostrophe S. And I was like, is that just a grammatical error? Or did somebody try to make that a joke and I don't get it? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And I only noticed that because, like, so the much contrast. of my job as, like, writer's assistant and script coordinator previously was finding grammatical errors and like I would see animatics and be like there shouldn't be an apostrophe there things like that so I saw that and was like oh no did somebody not catch that or is it a joke that I don't get <laughs> <laughs> there's your pitch for working on uh, the next season of Spongebob you'll catch those yeah. straight <laughs> apostrophes yeah. someone's gotta catch these <laughs> also just the visual of like he's like really tall yeah. and he has a face <laughs> and then just his head is the Gary that we know of just like the snail is a head yeah. you're like what is his body? <laughs> but I like that in his dream, he's yeah. like a <laughs> opera type vibe 
going around his little library. Uh, yeah. And SpongeBob is like tiny and stupid and, uh, and he's like really smart and tall. <laughs> what's great is um just the contrast between normal Gary who only says meow and this Gary who's got like, you know, the vocabulary of a, a literary genius. And so um he also gives SpongeBob the knowledge of like you can do anything in dreams. Like this is this is the the dream world. Anything's possible. Like that's how I have this impossibly large body now all of a sudden. Um but one thing you guys touched on, and I think this is so funny, is um, one of the characteristics SpongeBob has is that he is kind of dumb. But yet, like, I would say, like, if you think of dumb characters in SpongeBob, like, your mind goes to Patrick. There's, like, an even yeah. dumber character. <laughs> and it's so funny that the two main characters are just probably the two dumbest of the whole series. <laughs> and, like, a lot of it is Squidward making fun of them and being sarcastic i'm just uh, like now realizing it's so funny that it's like dumb and dumber in that sense i don't think of spongebob as dumb i think of him as naive and also like he's he's very willing to learn things and the things that he does know how to do he's really good at whereas patrick is like that makes sense inept <laughs> but spongebob is just like <laughs> he he's not inept he's very childlike but he is good at mm. the stuff like That's he's the best fry it. cook and he's it's a true. good friend. He takes Very care of Gary. Fun. He has a gorgeous home. Yeah. <laughs> so um, one thing I'm just now getting, so like uh, uh, SpongeBob is this very like naive, not to get like philosophical about it, but like SpongeBob's this very naive, dumb quote unquote, where SpongeBob, or, and then his neighbor Squidward consider, considers himself like so sophisticated and classy and like so much better than SpongeBob and Patrick yet. They both work at the same job. Like they both <laughs> yep. have ended up at the same place, and they yes, got two they totally different outlooks on life. And I bet you SpongeBob's a lot more happy than than Squidward is. Well, he's a lot happier, and he's much more respected. <laughs> and <laughs> Squidward Ooh, is just like yeah, yeah. Squidward is so down on himself and down on everything around him. He's just like so resigned to his life. Where SpongeBob is like. I'm a fry cook and I love yes. doing that and I'm good at it. And Squidward's like, I hate everything about my life. Mm. But yeah, they they <laughs> are they work the same job and Squidward is an intellectual and he's educated yeah. and <laughs> fancy. They work at the same job. One of my favorite <laughs> quotes talking about the quotes is I'm Squidward. He's Squidward. We're all Squidward. <laughs> you can use that in any context, honestly. <laughs> But so after he leaves Gary's dream, he's going to hop back into his own dream. But the last second, he sees Patrick's dreaming. And just in classic SpongeBob fashion, his logic is like, well, I can't resist. <laughs> he just goes <laughs> in anyways. He's confused by Patrick's very uh, bare bones dream. It's literally just Patrick riding the, the quarter seahorse ride that you, you know. That you see at, at, um, the, at the grocery, grocery stores. stores. <laughs> yeah. I um, love Patrick's dream. And I think the juxtaposition between their Gary's dream and Patrick's dream is so funny. And also like there's this <laughs> the great moment where like he's riding on the thing and SpongeBob is like, Patrick, this is a dream. You can do anything you want. He's like, yep. He's just riding on the seahorse. <laughs> and when it stops mm -hmm. and he tries to put the quarter in and it goes down the grate, the grate wasn't even there before. So he... <laughs> imagine yeah. the great there mm -hmm. the quarter goes down it and then he's like man i'm out of quarters but he doesn't think like i can imagine another quarter i love patrick he is so simple mm -hmm. <laughs> and i love yeah. his because like gary's dream you're like what is this gonna be and then he's like king of the library he's british he's tall <laughs> he's like yeah. so smart and quoting classic literature and then you get to patrick's dream and he's like no he's just this is this is Patrick. There is no deeper to him. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is Patrick. <laughs> yeah, literally. I think the great there is the best part because, like you said, his his dream is just a full white background. Like the the dream bubble is white, and it, yeah. Patrick didn't bother to like fill in any of the other dream parts. You wouldn't He's, think I to do only that. want to He's ride this little like, seahorse. Where am I? He's just thinking I'm on a ride no. and I'm having. Uh -huh. Seahorse, yeah. <laughs> um, I think one of the we'll probably figure, talk more about it as we talk about some of the other dreams. But like this, this episode, <laughs> you doing all right? 
I got out of focus. I needed to get back in focus. Very fun Sorry. Walk. That's a visual gag. Of go to our YouTube it's if you want to see. Gag that you're going to miss if you only listen. You got to go to YouTube if you want these visual gags. Yeah, yeah, I'm like here trying to get back in focus while Evan's talking. Sorry, go on. Uh, uh, what this episode does so well is it captures so many classic dream tropes like the thing that's just out of reach performance anxiety which we'll get to with with squidward but to it right now like we yeah let's get to it right now so uh after patrick he's the next squidward's dream correct yep he's like on his way home every time and then he's like oh well there's another dream here i might as well go see what that's about let's get into the squidward one evan set the scene squidward's dream he is in a concert hall and squidward is per uh doing a, a clarinet recital um I think it's the clarinet that he plays. Either that or like a mm-hmm. oh, one is. of those. Yeah. A no, woodwind no, no, it's instrument. A clarinet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, obviously SpongeBob crashes it. Within this performance anxiety dream is also this like jealousy thing that he has that is super relatable when you watch it. It's like you're trying to impress this person and then this person that super annoys you is just like chirping in their ear like making them laugh their ass off and it, it's like nothing more bothersome than that this part of it too reflects his normal life too which is like everything seems really easy for spongebob and everything is really hard for me so you said you uh growing up you did dance and uh i, I played violin mm-hmm. as a kid growing up mm. so squidward's dream I is probably too. the one i can most relate to but i wanted to ask what sort of recurring dreams do you have because I have a few very specific ones I have so many <laughs> I'll start I'll start because okay. I only have one it's um and it's almost not ever the same dream but it is always the same reoccurring th- theme and, and thing going on and even just talking about it right now is kind of getting me a little sweaty it makes me so stressed I am on vacation somewhere And it is the last day we're about to leave and I have to pack all of my stuff and all of my stuff is like everywhere, all spread out. And for whatever reason, I like won't pack. And it just makes me continually more and more stressed. Like there's other people in the dream and they're packing and I'm just like, oh my God, where's my stuff? Like I'm stressing about packing, but I never get to the packing. And I wake mm-hmm. up stressed every single time. And, you know, I probably should look into it because I know dreams have yeah. those like, subconscious meanings. Yeah, you not Google your dreams whatnot, when you wake but... up? I Google my dreams every single no, morning. No, because I'm so stressed about it. I'm trying not to think about it. Oh, my God. That's probably such a simple one, too. We should look that up. All right. All right. All right. We're going to do it. Let's do it live. Let's do it live. Let's let's <laughs> diagnose me right here. Um, what, what would you say? So dream about... I would say dream about um, procrastinating packing. Oh, yeah, that's That's the word. I literally do this every morning. I did it this morning. You may have just solved the problem there, too, because I I procrastinate quite a bit. Oh, wow. (laughs) Okay, let's see. All right, dream about packing, uh, moving and packing dreams. Seeing yourself packing in a dream is an omen of big changes ahead. What? I have had this dream many times. It always seems to be packing my bags. See, now this one doesn't feel right because it's more about the stress of packing, not actually packing. Well, then do like dream about stress while packing. Like you have to be really specific. Mm. Mm. Keep looking. Keep looking. I'll keep looking. Evan, you guys, you tell any... me about your dreams. Evan, do you have dreams? I do. So um, <laughs> the most commonplace one is like, I, I don't assign it any meaning. It's, it's, it's just like having to go to the bathroom. And then I wake up and I need to go to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, thank God. You are <laughs> this close from peeing the bed. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the one I should dig into is I'll usually have these dreams that are very vivid of me going to school, navigating some like complicated hallway system, and then not knowing what my class schedule is. Yes. It's like you t- don't, oh, like you get I, school and you're like, <laughs> I don't even know what classes I'm in. Like, I have that dream. I yes. kid you not, three oh or four God. times a week. We have the same recurring dream. And I talk about it with my therapist all the time. I'm always just like, I don't want to have dreams about high school anymore. Yeah. 31. Yeah. <laughs> right. The dream about being late for class indicates that you always feel a sense of urgency on your work and always feel great pressure. Uh, yeah, oh. I guess that's pretty <laughs> accurate. That's, that's kind of accurate. <laughs> yeah. 
so okay, but this is, mine takes a bit of a, a weird turn. So the packing is about change, but if it's like stressful packing, it can indicate sadness or insecurity or longing for old ways about cha- like about upcoming changes. So okay, but if you think about it, yeah. direct metaphor because you're avoiding packing to go somewhere new. Literally, you're avoiding the new thing. Yeah. So, so we're urgently That's trying good. to leave high school, and you're urgently trying to stay there trying to go back. Like, Don't be busy. <laughs> well evan i have that dream a lot um the one that i have that's related to the performance anxiety is very funny so i have a lot of nutcracker dreams because i did nutcracker growing up every year but the one i've had a lot more seasonally because it's nutcracker season so i'm hearing the music when i like go to the mall like it's just like it it does something on a ptsd um, conscious levels <laughs> luckily that season is over for mall music so i'm like thank god i can take a break but yeah. um i had a dream the day before yesterday that i i had to go on for snow queen and as my age which usually i'm i'm young and i have to go on for snow queen but i was my age and i was like oh i'm gonna need to practice like i haven't put point shoes on in a long time <laughs> This is not going to look good. And I was just like rehearsing over and over the segment of the Snow Queen variation from my dance studio over and over. And like, I still remember it. I never did it, but I learned it over and over for the dream. Just kept doing it and rehearsing. And then I woke up. It's just like you wake up and you're like, I still can't do those things that I couldn't do when I was 16. (laughs) (laughs) So I think one of the great things here if if now we're talking about squidward's dream and the relatability of it watching or or just hearing squidward quotes back as an adult you're like oh man kind of relate to squidward a lot more than i used to (laughs) well and it's funny because in high school i ended up having to play clarinet for a little while in band so when and i and i sounded not good um clarinet's really hard to sound like good on it takes a while and i sounded like squidward for real so i was watching it last night and i was like oh that's what i sounded like (laughs) just fine (laughs) and so then (laughs) back to squidward's dream though he's playing the clarinet and the king keeps every time he stops to be like spongebob get out of here he's like hey i didn't tell you that i think he's like australian he's like i didn't tell you to stop playing and so then squidward has to keep playing how aggressive (laughs) exactly and then the clarinet breaks at some point and then He's got to play play a SpongeBob shaped clarinet. And this is the part he Googled was like, what does this mean? Like, so then SpongeBob just goes, "Ah, it's so good. And everyone loves it. And I think this gets back to like what you were saying, Evan, is he wanted so badly to impress the king, but then SpongeBob Mm -hmm. just so effortlessly, and even with the the horrible song, he ended up impressing everyone. Everything's easy for SpongeBob, everything's hard for Squidward. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's a good, it's a common theme. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. who's after that? There are a couple more dreams. Andy or Mr. Crow? Pearl. Pearl's Pearl's dream he hops into for a second. I I more so want to spend Pearl's dream on. What is the relationship actually between Mr. Krabs and Pearl? I think it's his <laughs> like, adopted daughter. No, I think it's just one of those SpongeBob world things where it's like, yeah, maybe her mom was a whale. Uh, it's pretty classic though. But so Pearl, yeah, yeah, Mr. Krabs' daughter Pearl is having a tea party. And he's like, I'm sure Mr. Krabs' dream is a bit more uh, robust. <laughs> I think is what he says. What does she say? She's like, men don't understand like the, the eloquence of tea party. Something or, or, like yeah. that. And I always felt like the writers did not understand how old Pearl was because (laughs) she's in high school (laughs) and a lot of that, like Uh she at one point like has to take SpongeBob to prom and she's dating and she's doing all these things. Why in her dream would she be like four years old having a tea party with a teddy bear? (laughs) She's procrastinating packing. Yeah. (laughs) She's procrastinating packing. But they're always just kind of like Pearl. She's a daughter and a girl. (laughs) I was like, okay. <laughs> and a girl. She's got the classic where she takes over the Krusty Krab and SpongeBob goes, uh, yeah, what's a salad? That's a great episode. It's great. That's a great episode. <laughs> Anytime someone orders a salad, I'll say that. It's probably annoying. But I like when he's making the salad and oh. it's like, he just puts like lettuce in the tomato and he's like, that's cool. That's hip. <laughs> okay. Here's your food. Yeah. He's like really <laughs> upset by it. Yeah. He's crying. It's hilarious. 
Um, but yeah, Pearl's Dream just made me laugh because I was like, yeah, they do not know the category of daughter <laughs> of like adolescence for girls. <laughs> like, I'm sure their daughters were like no, seven yeah. and they were like, my daughter plays tea party. And they're like, perfect. Pearl, daughter, girl. Great. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. We don't have to get too much into it, but a lot of animation, especially back then, but also now is very male heavy. There's not a lot of female animation writers mm -hmm. at this period. And so whenever I see things that are like, not on purpose like i can tell it's not intentional sexism but you can see it i'm just like mm. and then you look yeah. at the credits and you're like nary a woman <laughs> now i understand yeah, yeah. No, that makes perfect <laughs> sense and it is things like that that will will, will really shine a light on it um uh -huh. but like yeah. you said mr krabs's dream is phenomenal. his dream's amazing now I'm not going to hijack the whole podcast here, but I just saw the whale last night. So the Moby Dick metaphors in, in, in Mr. Krabs' dream were not lost on me at all. And so him literally fishing like Moby Dick, like for the whale, the money, the thing that will probably kill Mr. Krabs more than anything is just <laughs> mwah, chef's kiss. It was really okay. beautiful. Yeah. Well, also like his dream design is very good. It's very dark. And the water is rough. And like when SpongeBob enters it, it almost to me was a little um, homage to Alice in Wonderland when she's floating in her tears. The the original the animation. Saying, yeah. Yeah. Where like she leaves the doorknob, yeah. she's floating in her own tears, and then she gets to the island. It kind of was that with SpongeBob popping into the dream, floating in his little ocean, and then he gets to the boat. Like it, it really looked the same to me. Um, but also when he gets to the boat and he's just like, hi, Mr. Grout. Like he's just so cute. But when they catch, <laughs> when Mr. Krabs finally catches his white whale, the hook pierces the dollar and all the pennies are coming out. I loved that. It's great. The big net. Yeah, it was great. And it was like it was, giant wallet. He's like, yeah, not nice. that, that. He <laughs> gets good. a giant wallet out. And oh, the greatest callback joke. So in the beginning, when SpongeBob's driving and he got his license, he's like, wow, my boater's license. And he's looking at it and he goes, I should have grown a mustache for this. And so oh, then yes. later when he pulls Mr. Krabs' wallet out, he goes, wow, you look great with a mustache, Mr. Krabs. It's so right. good. It's so great good. Callback. It's a blink and you'll miss it joke. And he that does look great with a mustache. But yeah, great callback. And he does. Yeah. Sandy's the last one. I love Sandy's whole vibe. I just want to say it. Her tree dome. I'm always, <laughs> I was just like, when I was little, I was like, that's what I want. Like, I want that kind of house. It's, she's an amazing <laughs> house design. <laughs> she has a great yard. The best Tree Dome episode is the introduction where SpongeBob's like, I don't need it. I don't need well, it. Water. He doesn't know he does, needs water. water. And then also water. the winter one where Sandy's hibernating and they break in there. Mm -hmm. Those are the, my favorite Tree Dome episodes. I like those two. And also the one where they have to take care of Sandy's pet caterpillar and it turns into the butterfly. Oh, she goes out of and town and, know, and, and they're freaking out. out. It's so good. And that's another great episode example of when they use realism and they do the real butterfly and it looks like a monster because up close it's like yeah, on their yeah, yes. Ugh, Amazing. <laughs> um, but Sandy's dream. Sandy's dream. Oh, this was another. Well, this was an example with of the, the wordplay that I love that they do. Is yeah, she's snowboarding in the air, and <laughs> SpongeBob is like, "This looks scary," and she's like, "No, it's fine as long as you have a parachute." And then, or she says like, "A big old parachute," you know. And he's like, "A pair of yeah, shoes." A parachute, and he like, no, blows pair up of shoes. Then he's like, "A parakeet?" No, not a parakeet. Parachute, and then she doesn't launch hers in time. And she lands in the clam manure and she says, paramedic. Love that joke. Yes. <laughs> it's great. And the timing's yeah. perfect. Like you said, great world wordplay joke. And it's uh it's one of the funnier <laughs> dreams. I'd say that and like Patrick's dreams are pretty funny in my opinion. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh I really like the physics of the dream. Like when he's skydiving instead of like landing on the ground, he poofs out the dream and then he gets back to his own body. And uh, he's dreaming, and everyone's like, SpongeBob, SpongeBob, SpongeBob. That would kind of freak me out. But then he wakes up, and everyone is actually there screaming at him. Yeah, a little Wizard of Oz moment. But if you watch the that moment, like everyone's mouths, I love watching. Um, it's what in animation they call the lip flap, which is syncing the lips to um, what the actor is saying. But the lip flap is mm -hmm. very funny in this little moment because, like, 
you can hear Mr. Krabs being like, stay out of my dream. Or like, and Sandy's like, stay in your own dream. And Squidward is doing his like, get out of my dream. You know, like they all have their own little line, but the lip flap is just going like, boop, 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 boop. It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny to watch the lip flap on a funny. lot of SpongeBob um, crowd scenes because their lips are very like up and downy fish mouths. <laughs> and so they don't often match what they're saying, but uh, I love it. It's great. We actually had this debate a while, or I'm not, not even debate. We just had questions around how like, voicing work. Like, do they draw the mouths moving? And I figured they record voice work first and then try to animate to that. So now we know the, the technical term. Yeah. It's like, um, I've so far it has been true on the shows I've worked on where it's you do the script and then the animators will like kind of start doing very rough storyboards. Um, and while that's happening, the actors are recording and then they kind of mush the two to make the animatic and it's like pretty rough. So a lot of times they don't even have a lot of mouth movement in animatic and then the script will change. It'll change again. It'll change again, you know, and then by the time they're actually doing the lip flap, the lines are pretty set. But even if they have to change things later, they'll have to okay. modify things. But um, yeah, it's usually the record and the storyboards are happening around the same time. And then the animatic is like the result of those two for timing mostly. Interesting. That's my favorite stage okay. is the animatic stage because it's basically like a little bit come to life with the voices, but it's like not colored in yet. And the lines are all like... Haggard. Yeah. <laughs> the next episode we are covering is season three, episode ten. Uh, tra- is it training video or Krusty Krab training, training video? video. Uh, it's one of my favorite animated episodes of anything ever. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. That's some high praise. Training video. Before we get into it, this reminded me of like a community episode, like that one of their one-off episodes, mm-hmm. like a documentary yeah. one where Abed is like in charge of it. So. I loved revisiting this episode. Uh, someone uh, set set the scene, I guess. I don't even know how to uh, start this. Training video is um, the Krusty Krab official training video. It starts off jumping right into it. There's no episode around it. We are just watching like the Krusty Krab basically corporate mm. training video for new employees. Yes, and that's why we love it. Thank there's you. no. I, I love it because it's there's no intro. It's like I've done so many of these mm-hmm. stupid videos, weird jobs I've had where they just like you come in, you have an hour shift and they're like, you have to watch the training video, then take a quiz. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, God. And then you have to do like serve safe mm-hmm. and make sure you're not like you're giving food poisoning. Poison. I also I think if I'm right, I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. I think Tom Kenny is also the narrator voice. So this is basically a full Tom Kenny. episode. He is. <laughs> He's like 90 percent of this episode. And it's great. He's the pilot, but, too. In this episode, I just love that we're just like basically treated like an employee watching the Krusty Krab training video and SpongeBob is in it, but he seems to not even really realize that he's in it. Well, he's like that classic if you're watching a training video. Yeah, there's always that one person who is the example new hire and they're like talking to the narrator. They're like, oh, right, I'm ready for my first shift. And the narrator's like, whoa, like you have a lot to learn before you're ready to serve at the Krusty Krab, young one. And so that's SpongeBob's role in it is he's like the example new employee. And so, uh, which I I, also think that is pretty absurd because they're the only two employees. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Mr. Krabs doesn't care. There, But also (laughs) one of my favorite moments is like when they're going through the history of how the Krusty Krab came to be, and they're like, now you might have oh, think like so- Mr. Krabs wasn't always a, you know, money, whatever they say, like good with money, but he was. And they show him his little kid. A so successful then they're like, businessman, restaurateur. Yeah, and he's like using his quarter on a string to get a drink out of any machine. But when they show <laughs> yeah. the like, here's how he got the crusty crab. And it's it was the rusty crab and it was an old folks home. And they're like, and all he had to do was this. And they just get rid of all the old people. <laughs> And paint a K yeah. with a it's few like, changes, and they just vanish yeah, the old minor people. Changes, and it's like all the old people are uh, gone. Um, <laughs> and now so, it's a restaurant. I totally love that. But the best part is they have an introduction that they spend so little time on, and this was the really community aspect to it. Um, mm-hmm. So between like the quarter string scene and, and like the rusty crab, 
there's the narrator goes after the war and Mr. Krabs yep. dealt with a, a bout of depression. He came into a fortune and it was just like spent no time. And they just have like this depressed looking Mr. Krabs shot. And I was like, that is so funny. And it's so wild that like just flew over my head as a kid. Like, uh -huh. yeah, like, you're, like, you're, like, what war? So like as a kid, you it's watch that really and you're just funny. like war, depression. And then you're like, oh, there's the restaurant. I know that restaurant. That's where SpongeBob works. <laughs> <laughs> It's really good. I'm shocked my parents didn't ever hear or see it and be like, no, no, turn this off. What are you doing? <laughs> Just the smallest bit of Mr. Krabs lore dropped in there that like really, truly defines his character. So and they, they yeah. jump right over it. It's, and it's, it's also yeah, like, perfect. it's so, you're like, oh, that's um, probably why he's so obsessed with money because he like grew up in the depression and he was in World War II and he like has one of those oh like, God, he does so not have right. an attitude of abundance. He has an attitude of scarcity and he needs all his money close. <laughs> Did we just solve Mr. Krabs with that one line? That's brilliant. Um, that's really, actually really funny. But then we get into, um, you know, and I may be jumping around if, if someone's able to correct me, but I, th fine. I think um, we get into uh, the whole time SpongeBob's like, oh, great. Now I can learn to make a Krabby Patty. He's like, no, no, no. no. Now you must go. No. Yeah, you got to go over employee, like a morale or attitude. And this is where they do like the, the comparison between SpongeBob and uh, Squidward. And the mm -hmm. best joke here is I see you see this all the time on Twitter. Squidward's got that giant pin and it just says, I really yeah. wish I wasn't here right now. <laughs> so good. I wish I had that pin. I bet it's some of them so Etsy funny. Them. They have to. We mm -hmm. that's like perfect Squidward though, and it's just another one of those things where I was like, man, I relate to Squidward so much. I really don't want to be here right now. <laughs> and there's just a small shot of Squidward like wiping his nose at the counter, and it's so funny yeah. the way they animate it. He just like kind of moves, okay. jiggles his nose back and forth. He's very it's gelatinous so funny. and really good the way they move him, perfect like a squid would be. Put it. Yeah. Yeah, he's a squid. Actually, I think he's an oh, octopus, but stop. his name is Squidward. Why would he be called Squidward? He can't be an octopus. Well, I mean, he can't there's be. a... There's no hold way. on, I'm going to look this up because I looked this up once before, and um, I think he's an octopus based on number of legs that he has. He does have... So there's like four. I think he only has six legs. Yeah, he has six legs. He's got four... But, I think an octopus, uh, octa being the an octopus. according to Wikipedia. Yeah, he's an octopus. What? Sorry. <laughs> How? Why would they do that to us? Oh, my whole life is a he lie. Sense. He, he looks uh -huh. like an octopus. Wow. His last looks name like is that Blobfish that came out not that long ago. <laughs> oh, Squidward blobfish. tentacles and his arch rival Squilliam Fancy Pants or whatever his name William is. Fancy Pants. But yeah, I love. The comparisons between SpongeBob and Squidward are great in this episode. And there's also one of my favorite segments is the hygiene segment. Oh. They do the hand washing while Squidward is in the back. And they're like, let's check on Squidward. And he's like sleeping in the bathroom, reading a magazine. And then they do the hand washing with SpongeBob. Right. Of like, you have to wash your hands. And he's like, mm -hmm. and they're like, get under those nails. And he's like, mm -hmm. he's just like nodding along. Um, <laughs> and then they're like, let's see those hands. And he brings up his little hands and there's no hands left because he's washed them nubs. off because he's so thorough <laughs> i love that they're, they're just I'm like so proud nub, uh -huh. these little nubs and they're so squeaky clean and they're like great job like it's so funny and then the thing that always stuck in my mind visually was um in the hygiene segment they're like once your face is free of boils <laughs> and he just he has like a giant oh, zit on his nose so and he brings the scissors in and just cuts it off <laughs> So gross, uh, but I love and then that. He, he's like, make sure your hair is 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 clean. And yeah. He's got one hair under that giant. Hair sprays his one little the hair, like um, what's that? Really like good. a little rascal. Yeah, it just yeah, what it does look like. Alpha. Then he puts uh, his hat right on. Ralphie. <laughs> Alpha. No, that's a Christmas story. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Alfalfa. Alfalfa. That's his name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so cute. And his filing cabinet with his organized lettuce and tomatoes, and yeah. it's great. <laughs> Not a pickle out of place. This, this episode tomato. is jam-packed with visual gags. There's so many great visuals. Also, it's even just like the, um, you know, they're using the music, but it's like, dun, 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 dun. And they're doing all the quick cuts around the <laughs> restaurant to show you different parts. Yeah. There's a great shot I love is when they go under the table and there's all the gum under the table. <laughs> yeah. It's just great. The floor is kind of shitty and there's gum under the table. Like, it's just such a good, again, <laughs> juxtaposition makes comedy. 
because they're doing champion music mm -hmm. and showing you that it's just a typical fast food restaurant. Formerly an old folks home. Yeah. <laughs> Formerly an old folks home. We don't know what happened uh, to them. They are gone. <laughs> this is also where we get Hopefully the, the poop acronym. People order the our patties. And you can't tell me every kid watching this doesn't love a well-placed poop joke because he goes, poop? He goes, every you need to know kid, our motto. I poop. Love it. Yeah, me too. I love it too. Yeah. But like they repeat He's the right. word poop back to each other like three times. They're like, poop, poop, yeah. poop. Yeah. Over and over a poop joke. It's just the word poop is funny. <laughs> he is a very good consonant. It's a very funny word. Mm -hmm. And they just say it over and over and over. And it has nothing to do with poop. It's just an acronym. And that's why it's so no. good. People order our mm. patties. I think this is where if I were a parent at the time and my kid were watching this, I would be like, maybe no. let's put on something <laughs> educational or something. Yeah, like. What the hell? Poop? <laughs> and I'm the opposite. I'd be like, this show is funny. You're going to be yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you watch it just like you. get into these weird scenarios where people come yeah. up to the counter and they're like, what do you think they're going to do? And it's like, I love that to order. A, uh, I don't even remember the options, but they were outrageous. Well, and I think because that's really how they are. Like, again, I've watched so many of these stupid mm -hmm. training videos and it's literally like when a customer comes up to the register, what do you think they need? And it'll be like a, a sandwich, B help. And you're like, help. <laughs> I work at a clothing yeah. store. The they're two. not going to yeah. have a sandwich. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, that makes sense. No sandwiches here. It's the kind of video where room. you watch at a corporate job where where they always pronounce harassment harassment for, yeah. for some yes. reason. Yes. <laughs> I think it's a British thing that they just like, it's like where they say like advertisement and you're like, okay, you're too fancy. <laughs> yeah. Aluminium. Huh? Yeah. What? Aluminium. Aluminium. Definitely harassment though is, um, I've heard that in those videos. This is probably towards the, towards the end because it's, the, the finally now making the Krabby Patty or whatever, and then it's just like the <laughs> slow zoom on the Krabby Patty, and when he takes the breath and he's like, um, question: Did you guys think this real life burger looked good? No, it looks like a Boca burger. It did not look good to me at all. It was the tomato so was specific, bigger than the patty. So good. You know so I'm good. right. It looked like a microwave like... Boca burger. Yeah. And I hate those. Okay, now that you put it so that I'm... way, you're a hundred. I don't correct. eat meat, and I've eaten so many variations of veggie oh. burgers. And Boca, this is not against you, but you should not put on the instructions that you can even put them in the microwave. You should just say put it in a pan or grill it because when they come out of the microwave, they are. Flubber. <laughs> the cartoon Krabby Patty to me looks delicious. Like mm -hmm. the oh. best burger maybe of all time. What would you say you'd compare this burger to a real life burger? The the animated one, not the real one we see in this. Oh, the animated one? I have I have my answer if you guys want me to go. Go for, for some it. reason I've always pictured it as like a white castle burger. I know it's not because it's got a mm -hmm. way more stuff, but as a kid, for some reason that was what I always equated it to. Animation wise, it kind of looks like an In N Out burger, but I can't yeah, say much for taste because I haven't had red meat since I was like 10. So I'm not like well versed mm, in fair. burgers. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say a quarter pounder at McDonald's. Oh, but... oh that's mm. a good one too, Evan. Mm. Yeah, from, from McDonald's. All answers. I got a joke that we missed that I, I'm just not okay. remembering. Yep. There's like all these great innovations at the Krusty Krab. They're like a, a yes. high tech burger flipping machine. Our our money uh, container. He goes, don't touch it. And then he goes, uh, the the liquid sucker upper thing. And then the best is he goes, beverage cooling device. And it's just a bunch of ice. Yeah. And Mr. Krabs goes imported because like they're imported. underwater. It was probably imported from the North probably Pole. Probably imported from or like from up north. But also the, uh, the straw, it's so says, like, funny it, to me. like liquid transfer liquid something. Transfer it's something about machine. transferring the liquid. And then he takes a sip and he's like, mm. <laughs> it's great. I think if you look at like yeah. the script of this episode, it is like a perfect lesson in like a 15 minute comedy. It's perfect. I agree. It's unique. Yeah. Like where he says, um, can I make a Krabby Patty now? And it cuts him off mid word, like so good. And then it was just the yeah. credits and you're like, 
oh my god like we still oh. don't know like, <laughs> like it's so innovative as a kid you knew it was coming and it was still frustrating like if yeah. you had seen the so episode before you oh they still didn't yeah. tell me the cri and then this gets me into probably one anytime you know i'm cooking like ravioli or whatever but so like when mm -hmm. they're really trying to get the secret patent formula he goes ravioli ravioli give me the formula yeah but he's doing this because he's right. the robot <laughs> Ravioli, yeah. ravioli, give me the formula. Uh, meatball, meatball, spaghetti and the meat. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formioli. It's great. I love that episode. <laughs> but yeah. all of these little like robot claw actions are so funny. Yeah. There's the, those those animators like are so good. <laughs> they should win a lifetime achievement award altogether. I think as far as animation goes, SpongeBob is um historic iconic like I, I i think it has to be considered one of the greats which is just wild to think about because yeah. you know it's like in our lifetime kind of it's cool when you have something that's in yeah. your lifespan that you're like oh this is yeah. like an iconic piece of art and spongebob is and people yes. who don't yeah. give it the credit they deserve should watch it more and change their mind because it's perfect <laughs> see yeah. i'm one of those people who have who's mostly ever seen it in passing you know I've seen episodes here and there but i've never like sat yeah. through and binged and these two episodes and even watching like the wet Are you inspired? One is like i'm inspired. inspired i might throw it on just in the background it, you can just jump in oh, and man. get it yeah you can jump in and you can jump around it's fun there's one that i oh, love that's really so good where they're they're listening to a con they crash somewhere and they're listening to a conch shell that is basically a magic eight ball and they're like crashed in a jungle and it's spongebob patrick and squidward and they just keep doing anything the conch says. And I think it's called the magic conch. And I'm saying conch, but it could be con. Mm -hmm. I never say that word right. So I'm just going to say magic it. Conch that feels wrong, though. Yeah, that magic feels conch? wrong. Conk? I can't say that. It sounds so weird coming out of my mouth. But there's another one that's so good that I dressed up as part of it for Halloween when I was 10. And it is the episode <laughs> where Squidward goes through the time machine. And he goes through all the different time periods. Oh. And he's like, he sees them as cavemen. And then he goes sure. to the future. Yeah. And so when I was 10, sure. I was obsessed with that episode. And I dressed as chrome. And I just wore silver. And people yeah. would be like, oh, are you like... Uh, and uh, then I was like, I'm uh, chrome from Spongebob, actually. Oh, I say anytime the future gets too out of hand, like there's like a new technology future. or something, I literally will go future. It's, it's ingrained in me. And when he's just like in the liminal space of like white with squares alone. and everything he touches is a alone. sound alone. 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 alone evan that's an episode it's if you so haven't seen good. you have to watch it's so weird and it's All a right. little bit yeah, like um, it's my list. introduction to abstract art yeah it's like abstract but also like when you're doing the caveman stuff it's just like very funny and seeing spongebob and patrick is like it's where that caveman spongebob meme comes from <gasps> yeah that's that episode where he's like looking and he has a beard <laughs> It's great. I'm only saying how good these are because Evan, you said you haven't watched all of them, but there's another one too where Squidward <laughs> moves to like a squid octopus um, colony, basically. That's Community. like him moving to the suburbs, essentially, where every house mm -hmm. is like uh -huh. to me because I grew up in in the valley, and to me, I was always just like that's Calabasas. Like every house is like exactly the same. They're all beige. <laughs> they're all the same color. And for Squidward, they're all his house. And he's just like, this Roll is going to be the best because everyone's like me. And after like a week, he's like, everyone's like me. This is horrible. <laughs> it's so good. It's a really good one. Let's um, let's do final thoughts. SpongeBob, uh, either this episode or or just SpongeBob as a whole. What, uh, what uh, Danielle, start us off here. Give us give us kind of your closing thoughts. Closing thoughts. I think SpongeBob SquarePants as a series is um, genius. And I don't use that word lightly because I think it is thrown around, but I do think it is. I think it is a genius show. So much of what they did joke-wise and also visual gags and signage jokes, which I love signage jokes, have made their way into how I write. So I'm very grateful to them. I think it's a, a gorgeous exercise in very specific character design and differentiating between characters. I think the background art and color is perfect all the time and it's great. I like there's, I can't think like, Oh, I don't like that episode of SpongeBob. Like that doesn't come up for me. Like every episode has something mm -hmm. that's great. And they also employ 
a joke tactic I love, which I also learned a little at Simpsons, which is every line should have a joke. And that's not just dialogue line. That is every line in the script should have a joke. So that's stage direction. That's every, like every line should have a joke. So they really do that. Like if you, if you dissect it from like a, a writer or animator or artist perspective, you can pause anywhere. Like you should be able to pause anywhere and see a joke on the screen. And they're really good at that. Um, So those are, those are my thoughts. I'm very passionate about SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah. Also, can you oh, hear my stone? I'm glad you brought it to us. No, no, no we can't. Mics aren't that good. <laughs> you never know. We won't keep you too much longer. <laughs> We're so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, that wasn't me trying to wrap it up, but I like uh, it was just really loud. Right when <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "I gotta go." No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Are <laughs> you the you like oh. so? Um, uh, no, I love get this here closer. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> these episodes were. We're super enjoyable. Uh, I am so glad that I revisited SpongeBob. You know, I'm a, a passive viewer of it. Um, and just hearing that about like this one joke per, per line or whatever, like that makes me want to binge it and, and just uh, uh, appreciate the, the craft and, and the quality of this show that people might think is like super um low elementary brow, yeah, yeah lowbrow whatever you want to call yeah, it yeah like lowbrow but, just for kids whatever like it's so not just mm-hmm. for kids it's like it's a lot of the things that people will praise about a show like rick and morty it's like oh quick fire rapid fire jokes and like and this is this is that without like the cynicism of rick and morty it's just like joy mm-hmm. is fun you know mm-hmm. lighthearted um i think i will turn on more uh episodes of spongebob you know i i lived with a roommate who used to like fall asleep to SpongeBob, yeah. and I was like, "He did. How do you do that?" I will not be able to fall asleep during them. I'll just be like, "I remember watching this in my childhood home. I can't fall asleep. It's uh-huh. so yeah. good." One more show that is really good at the jokes per minute ratio is Bob's Burgers. Excellent. I love that oh, show. Yeah, but they I'm do so a huge many Bob's Burgers fan. It's great, but they do so many good examples of like if you pause it, there's a joke everywhere, and they'd have so many yeah. little. I mean, I also, their animators are also great. Um, but they do so many visual gags in the background that you're like, that's not even related to what we're watching. But if you pause it and you're like, what's that guy doing? There's jokes everywhere. Yeah. They're so good. <laughs> Very true. You can see like Jimmy Pesto doing something in the background or yeah, or, or the, just even the board that has the pun of the day up there. So really well said. But I saw one on TikTok oh. yesterday that I was reminded of where there's a scene where Louise is screaming into a phone and they have um, it's like a, a call that's being monitored by police with her. So there's a guy in the background wearing headphones yeah. and every time she screams, you see him in the background lift up the headphones. And then when she starts just normal talking, he puts them back on and it's not the focus of the scene. She is. And there's a guy next to her, but in the background, he's just like <laughs> every time. It's so funny. Exactly. And, that's, and she goes, I that's love my it. daddy in there. That's yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah back to my closing thoughts on bob's burgers just kidding on spongebob <laughs> um oh both got bob in the name too interesting um so spongebob to me is content. one of those shows it's yeah it's it's great it's like, so i think bob spongebob poop. <laughs> that's I think you're onto something there. I, think that's why, on I think that's why they're both so funny okay spongebob yeah. for me as i mentioned is literally creme de la creme when it comes to animated shows my uncle jimmy would watch it with us as a kid quite regularly and so as i got older i realized oh man what kind of show is this that he was enjoying it literally just as much as us and i revisited it when i was older and i was like this holds up and it has been a long time since i've like sat down and watched spongebob i think i caught an episode or two like randomly at a hotel one time but like i have not like sat down and watched spongebob to like watch spongebob and what a joy it was just putting on these few episodes that I did watch. Um, I think that for me, when we talked about doing SpongeBob on the podcast, in my head, I was almost like, we have to do like this big, grandiose, like five hour long thing. But like that almost, that like felt like trying to pack in my dream. It almost became too stressful. And so this 
to me was just so perfect of like just the, the way to you know what let's just do it we got to cover it we, even if we're just doing a few episodes and i'm sure we quoted actually like 17 different seasons so <laughs> we managed to really do this show justice while talking about some really good highlights so i am very grateful that you brought this to us i was happy that i watched uh a uh, Rugrats Hanukkah because it had been a long time since I seen that, but I'm so glad it that we, still we holds covered it. And, uh, I'm glad you watched this it, today. and we yeah. can talk about it another time because I love Rugrats and yeah, I love that definitely. they're basically still the only Jewish media there is. <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. I no, was like, this SpongeBob was, was so influential that I'm like, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad. Before we wrap up, we've been talking about one SpongeBob as one uh, institution of animated media. You've worked on another institution of animated media, The Simpsons, and your uh, 2021 episode, uh, Three Dreams Denied, got a, a, a Writers Guild nomination in uh, 2021, I believe. Watch it. Comic Book Guy goes to Comic Con. Super funny episode. Um, Thank you. Uh, one quick question is he's asking questions to the panel, and I forget if it's during that scene, but there's like a, a quick line about Marvel movies and a, a jab at like DC <laughs> movies being bad. No judgment either way, but I was wondering where you fall on the DC Marvel spectrum, because uh, we love superhero movies uh -huh. here. Uh, you know, won't hold anything against you. Thank you. Um, that was not my joke. I have no qualms okay. with Marvel or DC. My main thing, like the the jokes that I was putting in in like my first draft, were um, mm -hmm. about the joke of the the panel being called the importance of canon because. Simpsons fans get really pissed off whenever something changes the canon. So all of my That's jokes were canon. Every fandom. Based. <laughs> yeah. But with Simpsons, it's That's really tricky great. because they're like, the show's been, you know, you changed something that was established in 1992. And we're like, okay, come yeah. on. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I do get it. I get the frustration, but um, it's also very amusing to me so all when i did my first pass on the script all of my jokes were about like canon jokes and also just like asking questions at pan like i had a really long runner of someone asking a very long uh badly worded question that didn't even really end up as a question because that's what i have seen at comic-con <laughs> um where they're kind of like they, so they wind through a paragraph and they end with like actually it's not really a question i have a yes. statement um want to say yeah. that I did. <laughs> that was what I was going for. Um, which then got trimmed and turned into the Marvel DC thing, which was fine. Uh -huh. But I, so I have no opinion on it because it, it's not for me and I don't watch so, superhero stuff. Very that diplomatic is, That's answer. good. So yeah, <laughs> I, you just struck a chord with me. So um, having been on reality TV, I get like a lot of randoms that reach out to me. And there are many people that will be like, hey, can I ask you a question? And you're like, yeah, what's up? And then they'll do that. And you're like, there's no question. There. There's not a yeah. single question in this long paragraph. That happens so often. That's a really good joke. So often. That was my whole, that was the whole scene originally was because every panel I've been to has been that. And it just, every time I'm just so like, good. that's not even, you're when not you asking this. this and you uh, ended up asking <laughs> this. And I thought that was so yeah. cool. And I really just couldn't believe like that you were able to come up with something like that. Like, huh? yeah. Or what? my favorite, okay, my favorite is like, did you have fun when you were filming this? Like, what are they going to say? No, like they want to work again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys like each other as like, friends? No, it was or are you drag. just castmates? No, we we like each other. We hang out all the time. We're best friends. I don't know. Like, what do you want? <laughs> like, they want to hear great. that you're best friends. That you improved everything. Like, it's so funny. So yeah, that was what I was going for, and it turned into what it is, which I still really enjoyed. That's awesome. Um, I believe you you uh, you just wrapped up working on Crapopolis. Can you tell yeah. us anything about the show? What's the premise of the show? What's it about? Um, yeah. Alex, it is a Dan Harmon show. I don't know if I said that earlier, but we oh, both yeah. love. Oh, I know my Dan, Dan Harmon shows. Yeah, it's a Dan Harmon show. Yep. Um, <laughs> it was very fun. So I worked on season two, and um, I think season one comes out pretty soon. I'm not sure. Season two, I okay. think, is scheduled wow, for so the fall. Already so. got two seasons in the jumper, though. I mean, animation love is a it. very long game. I say that a lot, but it it's. If pretty much if you think like, oh, I like that show, they probably have four seasons already booked because it takes wow. so long to make. So if they think something is going to go well, they usually order two seasons at a time. 
I don't know if that was the case here. I know I can only say that now because I just saw it was announced like Carpopolis got a season two, but I'm like, yeah, okay. I was, I worked on it a year ago, (laughs) but um, (laughs) it got a season two. Yay. That's what I worked on. Um, (laughs) But I'm allowed to say that because it was like on deadline. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm cool. (laughs) Uh, It was basically um, the exploration of one of the first civilizations in ancient Greece. So it includes mythology but also human civilization but it's like a fictional town called crapopolis and it's a blend of mythical and human so we got to like make up mythology but also use real mythology my uh hard-hitting journalism question here is crapopolis a poop joke (laughs) um i i want to say yes we never really talked about it like (laughs) which just seems Really? <laughs> because it's the name of the show. But yeah, we weren't re- like we weren't like making a bunch of poop jokes about it. Also, another thing that I was mentioning. So again, in comedy, consonants, K, P, lots of K's and P's. A lot of good consonants. Um, so comedy. a lot of times when people are coming up and I'm not that. I'm not assuming this is what Harmon did. But a lot of times when people are coming up with names for things, consonants stick out because they are funnier to say yeah mm-hmm. not that i know him personally but i also see him that being like a placeholder title as he's writing it he's like just call it crapopolis for now and then it just stuck yeah so that's gonna I be my head that is i think ruler to what happened <laughs> but i can't say formally yeah. <laughs> um on the record because i don't know but i would right <laughs> but it's a good word cakes and peas are good yeah. bees are good as a New Yorker cartoonist, Greek mythology is right up my alley. Uh, the, the consonants. Yes, I love That's your something I've never thought about. Thank you. I've never thought about consonants yeah. or like just like the mouth feel of a word, but that's going to be something I uh, am more conscientious of now. Um, Me too. Yeah, like your stuff is, yeah. is uh, very visual because it's, you know, that medium. But when you're thinking of like mm-hmm. how someone is going to say a joke, it is something to think about. Like how funny will it sound? Also like... Yeah numbers there are funnier numbers than others like it's just like weird things that you start to learn over time but you'll notice in shows of like number nines are in a lot of stuff sevens are in a lot of stuff of the remaining (laughs) uh numbers one to ten alex and i will each pitch you a number and you'll have to tell us which was picked the funnier number yeah all right alex do you want to go first first? oh okay I, i don't care i can go first i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna go with the number two. Um, I think, like you were saying, it's got a nice T consonant in the beginning. It's short. It's one consonant. And um, two is just like any sort of like buddy cop duo, cat dog, if you will. Like, it's just, I'm good sticking with two. Two dudes? Mm. Oh, Watch cartoons? Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's three of you every time you do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we're not good at math i don't you know did. when that class is in my dreams so. um shit uh i beat him i you might have beat me i am gonna say six based on the consonants e of it and you know of the remaining options i don't i feel like four is too feels too square and round i don't know i, don't know. I was gonna go with I was going to go with four, but I think I understand. It's kind of like a square, like a box. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't seem yeah, cool. I almost picked four though. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Uh, I, so who wins? Of six and two. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm going with six. It is <sighs> a goofy shape. It's a curly Q. has an X in it, which oh, is just yes. like goofy as fuck. But two <laughs> is just a little yeah, too but... even for me. Six is also even, but it's oh. more people. And it's more things. Yeah. So if you're like, Mm. like if I were writing something and saying like, I have to go like, I don't know, like six o'clock sounds better to me. I have to go do this for Mm. six hours. That's right. It's just a little better than two and two. But again, this is completely arbitrary. I have no idea what I'm (laughs) saying. This is factual. I don't, I am not a TV expert. I just, I think I'm right. (laughs) I'm pretty yeah. sure. No, I'm no, right. uh, you've convinced me. You convinced me, honestly. Yeah. The the X and the curly Q of it. I totally mm-hmm. see what you're saying. Yeah, like a two is like a teacher drawing a two. A six is like, Luke, yeah. you know, I don't know. 
Yeah, like Mr. Magoo go. drew the six. He was like, look, <laughs> look at this thing. Yeah, like it's it's a goofy little shape. And I like again, and you want to yeah. exaggerate. So if you're writing something and you're like, like, <laughs> oh, I'm so annoyed. I have to go to the grocery store. It's going to take me six hours. It's like, no, it's not. But if you say it's going to take me two hours, it might. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good point here. Even the six o'clock thing, yeah. that just sounded, it just sounds better. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I hear it. Sounds better. Uh, okay. Good job, Evan. Again, there's not really a reason. It just kind of is truth that I know. (laughs) Yeah. No, no, you convinced me, like you said. Um, (laughs) This has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm guessing we don't have any letterbox reviews. Do you have any news you want to go over out here, Evan? Uh, Not handy. Uh, Nothing I can think of. I had one bit of news that I thought was interesting. Uh, Back onto the superhero news, which uh, always happens here. Uh, HBO Max's most watched movie of 2022 was The Batman. And Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, actually a pitch to go listen to our The Batman podcast that we did back in March. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was crazy that that was the most watched movie on HBO Max for 2022. Is that um, the Robert Pattinson one? It is. Yes. Have you seen the, it? Yeah. I know you don't sense. love superhero yeah. movies. I like because... them. It's just not something that I seek out a lot. So I'm not very like well versed. Yeah. That's but fair. I don't dislike them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We love But I remember cat. that got a lot of press because like Robert Pattinson. He went from playing <laughs> a vampire to a bat. Don't forget um, he was also a wizard. Also oh, yeah. a wizard. That's my boy. That's my son. Oh. Sorry. Had to. Anytime I think of that scene, so it's it heartbreaking. Cry every time we watch. I can't, I can't watch. Danielle, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, where can our listeners find you online? Anything you want to plug before we sign off? Uh, first, thank you for having me. This was so fun. Um, I'm online a lot. My app, I guess you'll put it somewhere, but it's Danielle Weisberg because it's too long to have the G on the end for Twitter. <laughs> so. Um, it's just my name, but you have to stop typing because it's too long. And on Instagram, it's my whole name, Danielle Weisberg, because they don't have... So the with the G. Twitter's going to shit. Whatever. I still use it as if it is not a problem because it's all I have. Feels like it's going down, but I'm Mm -hmm. having a blast. Yeah, it's it's absolutely going down, but I don't want to learn another website and I refuse to. (laughs) So I'm just sticking with it until it literally disappears off my phone. Um, Check out (laughs) Crapopolis when it comes out. I don't know when that's happening, but it will be on Fox. Yeah, I wrote an episode of Spring too. So that'll probably be in the fall for me. But if it comes out in the spring, watch that. Some great animation on it. Really good artists they're cool people awesome yeah. well like evan said thank you so much for coming here hopefully we didn't keep you past lunch um just kidding <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna sign us <laughs> off here if you want more two dudes please check out our other episodes you can find them on apple spotify anywhere you listen to podcasts we're also on youtube now our youtube's uh, we're adding some of our older episodes there uh you can follow us at two dudes watch cartoons on both instagram and tiktok no uh, character limit there because that's a lot of characters and uh, if you're on Twitter, it's just two dudes watch. Uh, but if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, we appreciate if you would give us a rate and review. It helps uh, other people find us. But yeah, once again, thank you for joining us. And Danielle, thank you again for uh, for having a really fun podcast. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It was great. That'll do it for this episode. We'll catch you next time. It's not going to play my outro music. All right, I'm turning off the record. Two dudes watch cartoons.